All right, everyone. So I'm bringing this session to you here. I want to kind of jump into ransomware a little bit and kind of talk about it and show you a quick demonstration of what you what it actually is, kind of like an overview of what it is uh, and how you really should be thinking about it. And for those of you that are executives, I'm going to give you some questions you really need to be asking uh, your security teams about ransomware when you get hit with it. So let's just take a quick look at what it actually is and what's going on. So I'm going to exploit this machine and I'm going to mess with a file that's owned by the user Keytron. I'm going to show you what it looks like when your file gets encrypted by ransomware. So we're going to break into this machine using a very well-known exploit uh, that's not new. And I'll just go through, I'm not going to go through the process of setting it up here, but you can watch other videos of me setting up an exploit in Metasploit and see how this is done. So we're using a common exploit here. We're going to hit this target machine and I'm going to exploit and we end up with a session. All right. Now, the first thing I need to point out, and this is where I want your mind to be thinking, is as an attacker or as a threat actor or a ransomware operator, they have to get into your machine. They have to get into your network like I just did here for this machine for them to even be able to deploy ransomware. So let's look at what that looks like. I'm going to first elevate myself to a higher privilege. If I can spell. Now I've elevated. I'm going to go into a command shell. And now I'm going to mess with a file. This would represent your data. In the Keytron directory here. So see there's a file there named important data dot text. This is a file that, you know, would represent all of your data. That's really important to you that you don't want anyone to be able to access. Now currently I can open that file, ask Keytron, you know, as expected and as it's supposed to be. But once I do this attack here, I'm just going to use something built in Windows. I'll just use Cypher, which is Windows built-in encryption. And this is really all it takes. All right. So it tells us that file has been encrypted. Okay. Now, as a ransomware operator, sure, I could have more advanced encryption mechanisms and things like that that I can use. But for most of you out there, this is enough. Everything that I need to encrypt your files is built into Windows. I could use Cypher. There's things I could do in PowerShell. I don't need a specific piece of software to encrypt your data. So now what is the result of that? Well, let's go over and see what happens from the victim's perspective. So we're going to go ahead and log in as the victim here so that the victim would be seeing their files and the victim is appropriately Keytron. All right. So now I'm logged in. I'm at my desktop. Here's that important data text file. When I try to open it, I get this. I get access denied. And this is what happens when your stuff is encrypted. There is no way for you to open it because you have to get the key from me or I have to come in and decrypt it. There's no way when you try to open it, you're going to get that or it's going to be scrambled to where you can't use it. This is exactly what happens when you get hit by ransomware. All right. Now, if I wanted to make it so you could see it as the attacker, I could send you a key and give you instructions on how to decrypt it. But another thing we might do also is we might actually come in and decrypt it ourselves. For example, I could exploit the machine as the attacker, or I might have a back door to where I'm already in the machine. You know, I wouldn't have to necessarily re-exploit it if I already had a back door in there. And then once I get in, I could decrypt it. All right, let's get this back going here. So now at this point, your stuff is locked and you have no choice but to wait for the attacker to give you permissions um, to unlock that stuff. So let's sign out and let's talk about this for a minute. Because really what I want you to understand is that the problem here is not that we encrypted the data or we encrypted the file. The problem here is that we got in in the first place and we're able to take control of the system to the point that we could encrypt that data and encrypt that file. 
So as a administrator, as a CEO or CFO, um, whoever you may be, a manager of security, your primary question should not be how are we going to unencrypt the data because either you're going to pay the ransom or you're not or you have good backups. Like that's pretty much it. But the question you should be asking is how did they get into the environment to get enough control to encrypt the data in the first place? Because the thing about it is, think about it this way. If, some, if you came home one day and you walked into your house and you tried to open the refrigerator and there was a padlock on your refrigerator and you didn't have the key to unlock it. And then you said, well, let me go to my, let me go call someone, call 911. You go to pick up your phone and there's a lock around your phone where you can't get it off either. You can't pick it up either. And then you say, well, let me go into the restroom. I have to use the bathroom. This has got me so upset. I got to go use the restroom. So you get ready to go to your restroom and there's a padlock on that door and you don't have the key to that either. And then you try to go to your bedroom and that door is locked. Would your first response be, how dare someone lock all the stuff in my house? So would your first response be, how the heck did someone get into my house, lock all my stuff without me having any idea that they were ever here? Wouldn't that be your primary concern? So when you're thinking about being hit by ransomware, or if you get hit, your first question should really be, how did they get into the environment to do it in the first place? Now, as the attacker, if I chose to, I could go back and hit the victim again. And we could actually decrypt this for the victim if we wanted to. Right. Like if we were nice or if they paid the ransom, we could uh, get ourselves back. Because the key that encry that encrypted this is only accessible to the system account, which no one can log into Windows as system. So there's really no way to get this back other than this person or this attacker elevating that privilege again and uh, decrypting it. So now I'm going to go back to that same directory. And you can see the file is there and it's encrypted. So I can run Cypher again. All right, now it's decrypted. So now let's just say Keytron paid me my ransom. He's paid me my ransom, I just did this. Now if we go back and you know let Keytron log into the system again, because we trust him to log in now after he made this critical mistake of letting some ransomware operators in somehow. Now we go back in as Keytron and Keytron goes to his files on his desktop. There's his important data.txt. Now I can actually open my file. I've got my data back. So this is what's happening in a ransomware attack. And part of what prompted this video is I've gotten a lot of questions and if we produce some articles explaining this and based on the responses I've got back, there's a lot of people out there, including some cybersecurity professionals that didn't understand this concept. So now here it is in plain black and white, plain English, easy to understand for everyone to be able to get an idea of what's going on. So share this with as many people as you can so that even the non-technical get an idea of what's happening with ransomware, all right? Again, executives, the question is, how did they get into the environment in the first place? And if you find a root cause of an old exploit like the one that I just used to get in here, that's a bigger problem probably than the fact that your stuff got encrypted. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again in another one.